Let me tell you about the end. It's a story about the last scientist to work in this place, a mathematician, astronomer, physicist, and head of the school of Neoplatonic philosophy in Alexandria. That's an extraordinary range of accomplishments for any individual in any age. Her name was Hypatia. She was born in this city in the year 370 AD. This was a time when women had essentially no options. They were considered property. Nevertheless, Hypatia was able to move freely, unselfconsciously, through traditional male domains. By all accounts, she was a great beauty. And although she had many suitors, she had no interest in marriage. The Alexandria of Hypatia's time, by then long under Roman rule, was a city in grave conflict. Slavery, the cancer of the ancient world, had sapped classical civilization of its vitality. The growing Christian church was consolidating its power and attempting to eradicate pagan influence and culture. Hypatia stood at the focus, at the epicenter of mighty social forces. Cyril, the bishop of Alexandria, despised her, in part because of her close friendship with the Roman governor, but also because she symbolized, she was a symbol of learning and science, which were largely identified by the early church with paganism. In great personal danger, Hypatia continued to teach and to publish until in the year 415 AD, on her way to work, she was set upon by a fanatical mob of Cyril's followers. They dragged her from a chariot, tore off her clothes, and flayed her flesh from her bones with abalone shells. Her remains were burned, her works obliterated, her name forgotten. Cyril was made a saint. The glory you see around me is nothing but a memory. It does not exist. The last remains of the library were destroyed within a year of Hypatia's death. It's as if an entire civilization had undergone a, a sort of self-inflicted radical brain surgery so that most of its memories, discoveries, ideas, and passions were irrevocably wiped out. And the loss was incalculable. In some cases, we know only the tantalizing titles of books that had been destroyed. In most cases, we know neither the titles nor the authors. We do know that in this library, there were 123 different plays by Sophocles, of which only seven have survived to our time. One of those seven is Oedipus Rex. Similar numbers apply to the lost works of Aeschylus, Euripides, Aristophanes. It's a little as if the only surviving works of a man named William Shakespeare were Coriolanus and uh, A Winter's Tale, although we had heard that he had written some other things which were highly prized in his time. Plays called Hamlet, Macbeth, A Midsummer Night's Dream, Julius Caesar, King Lear, Romeo and Juliet. History is full of people who, out of fear or ignorance or the lust for power, have destroyed treasures of immeasurable value, which truly belong to all of us. We must not let it happen again.